Hello everybody and welcome for the long-awaited reboot of an Air Tycoon Online series. Um, for whatever reason, I've decided to choose Air Tycoon Online 2. Um, I've played a lot of Air Tycoon Online 3 in the past few years, usually one or two rounds every summer. Um, but yeah, for some reason today I felt like playing Air Tycoon Online 2 instead. I feel like this game was actually better than Air Tycoon Online 3 in terms of being less tedious. Um, and also more fun and kind of explosive in growth. So I wanted to give it another try. I mean, ultimately, the, the games are similar. Air Tycoon Online 1 and Air Tycoon Online 2, uh, or 2 and 3, I mean, are similar enough games where I believe 2 um, has slightly less kind of restrictions on the way you can play. Uh, you can open a hub anywhere, if I remember correctly. Um... And yeah, with, with that in mind, I've decided that I want to choose Air Tycoon Online 2. I believe the rules around leasing and stopovers are also less um, restrictive in the sense that you can make a stopover route almost in any way possible. Um, and yeah, with all that in mind, and ugh, there's one pr pr problem now remembering with this game, and that was the extremely restrictive... Um, extremely restrictive slots uh there's only 2600 slots in each airport and yeah as you guys can see um there's often a pretty big problem in having enough slots uh yeah that's a bit frustrating but uh no worries no worries we're gonna see how many planes we can we can get and if i remember correctly in this game as well the tuple of 124 is extremely broken um so yeah, another thing I'm going to try and decide here is whether I want to start at the beginning of a game. This guy already has 23 planes. Um, or I want to try to do the thing where I start later and try and catch up. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to try and do. Uh, is start in a later world and try and catch up with the top players. I'm not sure. If you want to be the biggest uh the biggest possible airline of course it's always advantageous to start as close to the beginning as possible you really want to start in a brand new fresh channel um but if you're just trying to have fun that's not necessarily the case you can just kind of start wherever you want um and i'll definitely be able to finish top 10 if i stay active throughout the course of the game um I think one of the main problems with this game actually is the fact that you must stay active for the entire course of the game in order to remain competitive. You can't really go inactive for more than 10 days and remain competitive whatsoever. Um, and also you kind of need extremely high play times uh, to make things work. Uh, do I have to, can't I select on the map? Oh yeah, I can for some reason I was lagging. Um, but yeah, I remember that London didn't quite have enough slots. So maybe I'll start somewhere like New York instead. And we'll see how this works. Uh, yep, so skip the tutorial. I can't remember how many slots there are in New York. Oh no, I'm level 2. Um, I don't want to be in cargo view mode. Or be in passengers. And yes, okay, there doesn't seem to be very much competition in New York. Additionally, two airports with about 500 slots is decent. Um, so yeah, I immediately see that there's still tons of good routes to New York. Um, so that's good. And if we take a look at the planes available, it looks like the DC-8 is the main plane right now. Is the Aleutian 62M out yet? No, I remember a plane needs 10,000 nautical miles of range to be stopover capable. In this game um yeah and that basically means we're not gonna have a stopover capable plane until the illusion 62m which i believe comes out in 1973 if i remember correct um so that's nice the other thing that is good in this game is i remember the tu124 might be th about the most broken thing imaginable in this game um yeah if i remember correctly the tuple of 124, I need 100 credits for that. Well, I have no idea how many credits I'm going to get naturally. 
Um, but no matter. Instead, I'm just going to focus on, you know, buying the slots and stuff I need for the routes. I'm going to make... Uh, yeah, this is going to be pretty tedious. I'm requesting all the slots I need, but that's that's okay. Um, no matter what I do, I cannot log out or let the turn pass because then I will lose my I will lose my level two and I'll level up to level three and everything's gonna take forever. Um, and if you guys don't know, basically making short haul routes um, at like 15 minute slot request time or whatever the frick it is is simply just unbearable. Um, yeah, I could never, I could never manage to do it. It takes so long um, that basically only long haul routes become available uh, unless you literally have zero amount of life whatsoever and just want to remember to, you know, log into your Air Tycoon every, like, five seconds, you know what I mean? Um, the other thing I could do here is I could just buy some, some credits. Let's see, 150 credits is $6.00. But if I remember correctly, you also get credits for free. Yes, like opening one route gives me ten credits. Um, but yeah, clearly I won't have enough to unlock everything. Cause let's see, the last slot request is quite a bit and that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna need to buy credits eventually. So I may as well do that now since I already commit to this world. Um. Okay, looking at this world, 233 planes, China Southern, where is this guy based? He's going to be our main competitor, it looks like. I forget how to enable his view. Um, <laughs> how, do I, how do I look at him? I forget how this game's GUI works. Anyways, guys, I am going to buy some credits and I'll be right back. Alright guys, credits purchased, which means we can, you know, of course, open up our routes as fast as possible. Um, which is, you know, obviously always a main priority. Um, it's just reducing the amount of, I guess you could call it IRL time it takes to play this game. Um, which in my opinion is already a little bit high. Uh, which is the reason why I typically only record these in the summer. Uh... Yeah, it's simply because that I don't have enough time in most of the year to, you know, make a good Air Tycoon series where I'm actually a large company and competitive and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, anyways, we're going to go ahead here and just make sure we have all our slot requests running, um, which is actually somewhat difficult of a task. Uh, we can go ahead and purchase our last um, slot request slot um uh, saying that seems funny slot request slot but uh yeah there's tons of routes we still we, we can make with to fill a one two four i can't remember exactly um all the like unique mechanics for this game so it's gonna be pretty interesting um rem like disc rediscovering the differences between this game and air tycoon 3 uh, but I do believe that a lot of factors which are important in Air Tycoon 3 are less important here. Um, but I can't remember correctly. One thing I remember that was less significant is the 124s and kind of low satisfaction planes, I guess. You should say that way. Uh, I could call it that way at least. Um, like Russian planes and stuff fill up a lot easier in this game. The other thing, if I remember correctly, is there's no pre-make pre-made um oh yeah another thing i remember yeah there's no pre-made uh these things i can't remember what these are even called uh what is service yeah there's no preset like service levels so you have to like make it uniquely for every single route which gets really really ridiculous of course when you have long haul flights and you have to click every single button um but obviously, I'm not too concerned uh, with that. It's just a few clicks. Um, plus, I, I, if I remember correctly, you get pretty fast at it once you get like later on in the game. You get really used to clicking all the right buttons to make that service satisfaction go up. Um, 
but yeah, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't become too annoying, um, because right now we're just going to kind of rapid fire open up, um, all these new routes as we wait for the turn to pass. I mean, I didn't even hit 100% service satisfaction there, but I'm not too concerned. Uh, yeah, what else are we going to need? We're going to need slots in so many airports. Um, I believe literally every airport which you can just reach with the 124 is a good 124 route. Um, I could be looking at competi competi competition routes like this, um, but I'm not sure. Uh, like none of these are 100% load factor, so I'm guessing that I could not um, add to that route and also be at 100% load factor, um, especially with my low satisfaction plane. And yeah, so you might be wondering with, you know, me complaining about how much time this game takes to play, why I'm doing one, you know, in the middle of like, for me, at least a school term, that kind of stuff. And that's because I have a really light course load this term, um, just due to the, like, classes I was able to get into and stuff like that. I only, only have three courses this term, which is, you know, really quite light of a like, course load. And I was like, wait, if I have so, like, light of a course load, why don't I take the time to just, you know, um make a nice air tycoon online series i haven't done it in a while i'm kind of missing i guess this good old game and yeah so why not give it a shot and so that's what we're doing right now um just playing a good old air tycoon online game uh yeah i don't quite can i open new hubs right away in this game is that how that works like can i open like london right now for example I don't really want to because there's not enough slots. I'd rather do like Chicago, for example. Can I do that? Is that a thing I can do? Don't nope, I don't want to buy the airport. I want to open up a new base here. Or do I not even need a new base to open? Like, how does that work? I forget, guys. Um, I don't even know where I would go to check that. Uh, can I? open a hub here like how do i do that or maybe i don't want to maybe like la would be a better hub Ooh, la is huge um but that kind of begs the question how many airports are in range with a tupelo 124 um not many not many that's for sure uh it appears like most of the airports you know which have a freaking airport to LAX are already taken. What airport is this, by the way? Okay, some guy named the airport after himself. I was like, I think that doesn't seem like a familiar um, LA based airport. Um, yeah, like what what airports are near LA? Like they got like Burbank, they got like Long Beach, and a whole bunch of other ones, which I can't quite remember right now. But I was like, that particular one does not seem familiar to me, which. Um, you know, that makes sense that it was a player who opened that, uh, that one. So, of course, I wouldn't have known about it. Uh, quests. Oh, sweet, we got more money. Yeah, if I remember correctly, the start for this game is faster, too. Um, yeah, I certainly don't have a lot of problems acquiring large numbers of aircraft here. Uh, but, yeah. Hey guys, I've made a bit of a discovery, sorry for the sudden transition, but I just remembered that in Air Tycoon Online 2, of course, you do not need hubs. Hubs don't exist. You can open routes between anywhere and like anywhere, wherever you want, whatever you want. Oh, I miss this feature so much. Um, super, super unrealistic, as you might be able to imagine, but it's super, super fun. Um... Because, once again, you can open routes wherever, whenever you want. Which has an extremely, extremely fun feeling to it. Because, yeah, you're just not, you're not limited by bases or anything silly like that. You can really just go ahead and open routes wherever you want, whenever you want. Um, and I love it. Uh, once again, we're having a little bit of a problem with keeping up in slot requests and stuff like that but that's fine once we switch to long haul routes this should be much much less of a problem um but yeah once again we just have to eventually get to the point of being able to switch to long haul routes um 
So yeah, it's a bit of a yikes, but we're gonna have we'll get there eventually. It shouldn't take too too long. Um but for now we are able to just you know go ahead and open up routes everywhere and anywhere. And boy do I miss this. Uh, uh I'm kind of glad I've chosen this game again. Um because Air Tycoon Online 3 can have some really boring like periods of the game, I guess. Um, it would be the best way to say it, where you just can't do anything because your main hub or whatever has run out of slots. Um, and all you can do is wait for it to get more slots, which kind of sucks. Where in this game, of course, that can never happen. You just keep opening routes wherever, whenever you want. Um, if one hub runs out of routes, of course, then you go ahead and find the next airport wherever you want. And you can go ahead and open routes there. Um... And that is a brilliant feeling. Uh, it means you always have something to do. Um, you can always find a new route to make. There's... I'm not going to lie. With stopovers, basically infinite demand. Um, yeah, there's not really a realistic way to run out of demand or um, find routes where... Or like run out of the ability to find new routes when you are in this situation. Um, which is both nice kind of like a blessing but also kind of a curse um because if you're not careful you can spend an infinite amount of time opening an infinite amount of small routes where in terms of time efficiency you'd much much rather open up a few um a few big routes uh and then kind of not bother with so many smaller routes unfortunately though um that's just not too possible uh, in a game like this where I would be too tempted to just keep opening more and more and more new routes. Uh, even though it's not very time efficient. Um, yeah. So with that in mind, we're going to have to pick a game plan for this world. Uh, once again, I haven't played in a long time, so you know, I can't really exactly remember what works and what doesn't work. But all I want to do is I want to become the largest airline possible without spending too much IRL time slash money. Uh, and the time part is a problem. I would like to kind of keep my necessary playtime under an hour a day. Um, I definitely have enough time for that. So uh, the, ma the, the main issue now becomes how um, do I use that time most effect effectively um, to maintain a large fleet, a profitable fleet, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, that is the challenge that is going to forever be a challenge and yeah, I'm not really sh too sure yet how I'm gonna work that out um, The best way to do it is to use only the larger aircraft that are available in the game and then fly those larger aircraft only between um, larger hubs and all stopovers so that you kind of get the 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 demand doubling effect from using a stopover route um or maybe you could consider it half halving the plane size uh for the same number of planes um and ultimately the largest like contributor to like wasting time in this game is just um the amount of time you have to spend replacing planes opening routes is fun so i don't mind if i have to spend more time doing that you know because always uh, finding and searching for new routes which are profitable is f like the funner part of the game for me um so i don't mind doing that but what is really unfun and boring and kind of stale is once you already have a whole bunch of routes it's like <coughs> it's like just you know replacing your planes with you know the appropriately sized maybe perhaps larger or smaller ones depending on what's been going on with the man and that is really really boring um, especially once you have thousands of planes, it takes so, so, so long to, you know, just make a few routes that, yeah, I don't find it, um, very enjoyable. And I don't think many people do find, you know, just replacing planes really fun, but yeah, with that in mind, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing. Um, I really, of course, want the Illusion 62M so I can start opening stopover routes. Um, and then as soon as I can, I'll be replacing those IL-62Ms um, 
with larger, more efficient, and better planes. Um, I'll probably be trying to upgrade to something the size of a TriStar or a DC-1030. Um, and then, yeah, the DC-1030 is a really nice size. It's just, I don't believe in this game it's the most efficient plane. Um, not even close, which kind of sucks. But yeah, we'll see what happens with that in the future. Um, yeah, another problem I'm kind of encountering, I'm going to encounter soon is... Actually, you know what? Um, well, let's not talk about that because I can't think of anything right now. Um, I'm just kind of rambling on as I make so many routes, but it doesn't seem to me like it's going to be very easy to make enough routes in time before the turn passes. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the camera here um, because you guys kind of get what's going on. It's mostly all of the same stuff. Me requesting slots, opening up new routes, um, um, almost exclusively with, you know, the TU-124s, because, you know, if I remember correctly, these things are the most profitable thing in the game, basically. But yeah, once I'm done with this, I'll be back in a bit um, with more routes open, and we'll, we'll go on from there. And welcome back, everybody. I rejoin you as we level up, making our request times significantly longer and it's no longer very fun i guess to start opening um shorter range routes at this point as you guys can also see we're unlocking a whole bunch of the quests on the very first uh tick that has passed um let's go ahead and take a look at our routes wow a lot a surprising amount of them are already at 100 percent load factor um and making good money um which is very very nice indeed as you guys can see also a ton and ton a ton of these routes um require more slots um so that's going to be a thing i focus on during these next uh ticks is making sure that a lot of those routes which require more slots will get those slots um in due time now the next thing i want to focus on um is leasing new aircraft um what what is the longest range one of these three um is the planes we're going to be the most interested in leasing um so i know the 707 120 has some of the best profitability i also don't know why it's given 6.2 for fuel efficiency because let me tell you that plane is horrifically on fuel efficient the 707 um i believe in real life, it burns around 10,000 kilograms of fuel per hour, um, which is a mind-blowingly high amount of fuel to use. Um, yeah, just completely mind-blowing, but this game does not seem to care. Um, so we don't care. But that doesn't mean we can't use the fact that the plane is remarkably good in this game. Uh, to our advantage and open up some routes specifically for the 707-120. Um, getting the most out of the 707-120 is pretty good in this game because it just makes so much money for what it is. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and make sure that a lot of these um, cities here are good for our 707-120s and we're going to go ahead and lease 10 707 120s um and yeah eventually we'll if we can find some more routes uh, for these planes we're gonna do so um, we're gonna shrink the business class to something pretty small because i don't believe there's high business demand on a lot of these routes and we're gonna go ahead and normal order 10 of those um and just add another 10 to that list uh i mean for example I have these routes, Los Angeles to Guadalajara, and, and Mazat, how, however you say that city, um, but those are, uh, for example, pretty prime uh, routes for the 707-120. Of course, I would like to take advantage of its good range, um, but there's not always the perfect routes to do so, um, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, now that the slot request times are kind of increased, it's 
super annoying to make routes on camera because you have to have all the slots and planes you need beforehand. So I'm going to go ahead and request all the slots I need and I'll be right back. All right, peeps, I've managed to collect some amount of good slots and stuff like that. Um, so we can go ahead and start opening some of the routes. Um, for now, I'm just going to leave all the prices on maximum and I'm going to like kind of fix the fact that that's probably not the best idea um, to have all your prices on max later on um basically speaking um of, co of course you don't want all your prices on maximum that's you know not the best strategy uh for nicer larger airplanes like the 707 120 um but what i'm gonna do to fix that is i'm just going to hmm, wait it's not the food which is the problem it's this okay um, in order to actually max out my, um, what am I trying to say? I've lost my train of thought. Be right back. All right, guys, I've taken a little bit of a break <clears throat> to kind of clear up my brain, uh, about, you know, um, this game a little bit. So we can go ahead and continue opening up some of our routes now. Um, yeah, well, this game is, you know, becoming pretty interesting. Um, finally, you know, moving on from all those illusions, uh, but, or no, those two levels, I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, dude, my brain is really scrambled today, I'm sorry. I've been a little bit sick recently, so, you know, I guess that would make sense. Um, but anyways, yeah, we're just going to continue on opening our 707-120 routes. I also went ahead and leased a few... What were they? A few other planes. They were like cheaper planes. I can't remember what they are though. Um, what were they? DC eight elevens, right, right, right. Um, those planes are also good planes, just not as efficient or, you know, easy to or not as profitable as the seven oh seven. Um the seven oh seven does have the advantage of, you know, being more profitable and that kind of stuff, but the DC eight has the advantage of being longer range and you know having tons more um kind of available routes which can be profitable um so you know that's good uh, on another note as you guys can see i'm taking heavy advantage of the fact that in this particular game right it doesn't really matter um what uh like where your hubs are you can always make a route anyway uh, so we can go ahead and open up tons of routes, um, as I'm doing now, to, you know, what feels like kind of random destinations all over the place without, you know, having to deal with any penalty or anything like that, which is super, super nice. Um, yeah, we can really just go ahead and open up routes wherever we find them, which is, you know, a refreshing feeling for sure. Um, there's tons of routes like Shanghai to Hyderabad which are plenty profitable and untaken. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and swoop in and take all these routes uh, wherever we find them, uh, which is really, really nice. Uh, where was that, Tehran or Karachi? Yeah, these were really like more cities. Uh, with, with, you know, 200 business and 200 tour makes them, you know, pretty decent cities, which, you know, weren't necessarily connected to all other um, good cities. Uh, I'm also going to take this time right now to go ahead and lease as many DCA-11s as possible. As you guys can see, I've shrunk the business class quite a bit, and we've ran out of leases, actually. So we're going to have to go ahead and buy more Tupelo 124s. Um, you know, we still have a lot of those to use, though I'm likely not going to order too many more of those just in the name of efficiency, I guess. Um, yeah, it's going to be a long time even before I manage to, f to, not for, not for, um, it's going to be a while even before I manage to use all my current planes. I have so many, uh, I need to use, and it's also going to be a while before I manage to fix all the slots, um, and make sure every plane has the, you know, correct amount of, or every route has the correct amount of slots as a lot of them are just like locked on 20 right now. Um, and yeah, I guess kind of that's, this is what tends to happen when you just have too many routes. Um, yeah, you just end up with a lot of routes, which are kind of unideal. Uh, but that's okay. 
um, because eventually we'll get these all fixed up and we'll get these all um, with the correct planes and everything will be nice. Everything will be nice indeed. Um, another issue, of course, is going to be, you know, a lot of these routes I'm making now would be better at stopovers. But, uh, of course, they're not stopovers since there's not a single stopover capable plane uh, that I have available right now, which is a bit unfortunate. But, I mean, all these issues will, will be worked out eventually. And, yeah, that's good. Um, anyways, because everything I'm going to be doing from here on out, I, I kind of believe it's going to be much the same. You know what I mean? Just, you know, opening... Um, opening more and more routes, which are, you know, roughly similar, you know, they all just have their own, you know, 300-ish um, business and tour to another large city. I'm going to keep doing this until it basically used all the planes, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, as you guys can see, I now have used every aircraft. Um, if you guys want to, like, take a look, you can just take a look at these routes here. Um, as you can see, a lot of big cities to smaller cities, um, that's, you know, basically the way we operate. And the last thing we need to do um, is, first of all, make sure our airports are not overcrowding, and it looks like most of them are not. They might be overcrowding by next turn, um, but, you know, I can preemptively um, kind of request some counters and so on. Uh, I think one thing I like about this game more than the original ATOs, I'm pretty sure the counter use is lighter. Um, if I remember correctly, counter use in ATO 3 is a lot higher. You need a lot more of them, and that's always a big frustration because you simply need to request so many darn counters. I remember spending literally hours just requesting counters after, you know, making a bunch of new routes, which is no fun. So I hope that that's not something that's going to happen. Um in this particular playthrough and I can just, you know, um, can kind of get on with my life and not have to worry about requesting so many counters. And, you know, it does seem like, however, the annoying part to this playthrough is definitely going to be slots where I'm going to have a ton and a ton of slot requesting to do. Um, and then, you know, increasing my schedule slowly and hopefully eventually getting most of these routes to their uh, proper or slot numbers. Um, but as you guys can see, it's going to take a while. So yeah, I'm just going to do that off camera and hopefully you can enjoy this episode. I'm going to try and, you know, release one of these episodes at least, you know, once every couple days. Um, hard to commit to completely though, but we'll see how this goes. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.